welcome back. I'm back. Good to see you guys again. Uh, it's been a, a few days. I missed you. I missed coming together and fellowshipping in God's name. And I am so happy you're back. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for the like buttons. Um, well, without further ado, let's get into His Word. But before we do that, let's bow our head and come to God Almighty. Most precious God, the only God. Thank you so much for allowing this to happen. The adversary has been trying to stop this video for the last, uh, well, actually all day long today. But we pray in the name of Jesus it ain't going to happen. We pray that uh, any demonic spirits that are trying to keep us from going, Lord, will be cast down into hell where they belong. We pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit, Lord, lets us go freely and touches the hearts and minds of all out there that are listening. I pray that many will listen, many will share this, and many will hear, and many will be uh, strengthened and, and brought closer to you. Thank you again. In your son Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. All right. Exciting time. Exciting time today. But first, I got a joke for you. Anybody out there like jokes? I kind of like jokes. My wife likes jokes more than I do. I'm more, a little more serious than she is, but uh, wait till you hear this one. You ready? All right. There was a rabbi, a telemarketer, and uh, a Hindu in a car together. Now, don't ask me why they're in a car together. But they're in a car together. So, they're going down the road. And like always, what do you think happens? <laughs> yep, that car breaks down. So, luckily for them, it didn't break down too far from a, uh, a house. Actually, a farm. So, they all three got out and decided to walk to the nearest uh, place. They come across this farm and knocked on the door. Lo and behold, someone was there. A farmer answered the door, and they ex expressed their uh, concern of what had happened to them. And it was late. Uh, matter of fact, it had just gotten dark when they got there, and uh, the farmer was so nice and generous and invited them, invited them in. Uh, of course, he did tell them that he had two spare beds available, and that one of them would have to sleep out in the barn. Now, the Hindu being the guy that he is, said, I'm a humble man. I'll sleep out in the barn. So out the barn he went, and the other two, uh, the telemarketer and uh, the rabbi, went each into their room and got ready for bed. And it wasn't very long, he heard a knock on the door. Well, the farmer got up and walked to the door and opened up the door, and who do you think was there? Yeah. The Hindu guy, he's like, I didn't know you had a cow in the barn. I said, it's, according to my religion, I, I cannot sleep with no cow. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> Don't want to sleep with no cow. Anyway, um, so the rabbi, being the man that he is, stepped up and said, I'll sleep out in the barn. So, of course, they were all happy. The telemarker went back to his bed and uh, the Hindu guy went to his bed and the farmer got ready to go to, to bed and wasn't very long. And sure enough, knock on the door. Who do you think it was? Yep, <laughs> it was a rabbi. The rabbi said, Farmer, I do thank you. But he said, I didn't know there was a pig in there. He said, I cannot sleep with no pig. No siree. So the farmer said, okay. He said, well, we only got one choice left. Looked over to telemarketer. Telemarketer was like, oh, all right. I guess I'll be out in the barn tonight. So the Hindu went to his room. Uh, rabbi went to his room, and a telemarketer went out to the barn. And it wasn't very long. Matter of fact, it was the quickest time ever. There was a knock on the door again. Who do you think it was? No, it was the pig and the cow. <laughs> I don't need to go any further, right? <laughs> anyway, I thought that was uh, that was kind of cute, but I think it goes right into line of what we're going to talk about today. Anybody have an idea what we're going to talk about? 
humbleness. Say that. Rabbi was humble. And the Hindu was humble. <laughs> Telemarker wasn't very humble, but uh, humbleness. Humility. Um, what do you think about when you hear the word humility or humbleness? Get a little mixed definitions, don't we? Um, some people I've hear, heard uh, tell me that uh, it's associated with being passive or submissive, uh, insecure. Uh, someone uh, has told me that uh, to be humbled is to put others ahead of himself. I've heard people say to be humble uh, is to be quiet and, and uh, allow others to take charge and lead the way. Um, well, let's get into it. Um, turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians. Let me get my Bible down here. 1 Corinthians. Um, you're going to find it towards the end, not all the way at the end, but towards the end, and in the New Testament, towards the end in the back. Um, so after Romans, and let me get in here real quick. Of course, <laughs> before 2 Corinthians, and before Galatians and Ephesians, you're going to you're going to come to 1 Corinthians. Now, turn your Bibles to chapter 13. And let's read verses 4 to 7, okay? Now, think about what I'm going to say, and I want you to tell me what is missing from what I read, okay? You ready? 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 7. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself and is not puffed up. It does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, and is not provoked, and doesn't think evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. All right, now tell me which was missing in all that we read. Let's see, you thought we was going to talk about humility. And here we talked about love. You see, love and humility go hand in hand. Absolutely like peas and carrots, like cold and ice, right? Not like the Hindu and the cow. <laughs> You see, you can't have one without the other. To be humble, you have to have love. You absolutely have to have love. And if you had love, you would be humble. I know what some of you are thinking. You know, I love, but I'm not as humble as I need to be. If we go back to verse, um, I think it's actually the first message we gave, um, about what? Loving the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And then the second was what? Yeah, loving others as yourself. If we did that, wouldn't that make us humble? Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verses 3, Blessed are those that are poor in spirit. Now if you... Look up poor in spirit, it means to be humble. Blessed are those, favored are those that are humble. For what? Theirs is the kingdom of God. They're, they're, and I'm so glad those that are humbled, um, that's where they're going to go. And I'm glad that when I go to heaven, you know, think about it. The best place in the whole universe for people that have humility would be in heaven. Let's face it, humility is not the most popular word uh, at all, is it? Especially not here in this country. Um, why? Guys, face it, you know, we're pretty spoiled and most of us Americans really want things our way. And, you know, we think, and sometimes that's, you know, it's valid that we think we know, you know, uh, know it. You know, we know what we're doing, we know how to do it, and, you know, we don't need uh, anybody else. I've heard uh, several pastors say that they would rather preach outside the United States because the love and the passion and the humility uh, outside the United States is, 
three, four, five times what you see in the United States. Because in the United States, uh, you know, we've got what some would call streets of gold. Um, we've got it made. We don't have to worry. Most of us don't have to worry about what we're going to eat. We don't have to worry about uh, the place we're going to stay. We don't have to worry about making sure our bills get paid. Um, you go to some of these third world countries and they're just happy to have two or three meals to eat a week. Um, and that's why they, they're so hunger for the Word of God and for hope. And uh, they're humbled. A lot of them would invite you into their house and give you whatever they had left to eat. They would give it to you. Um, the Lord instructs us to be humble. Now think about it. Humbleness is not thinking um, less of yourself. Okay? It's not thinking less of yourself. It's thinking of yourself less. Does that make sense? Okay, it's not thinking less of yourself. It's thinking of yourself less. It's when you put other people first. And I'm not saying be a door mind. Now, don't get me wrong, because uh, especially being a Christian, and it gets to me all the time, and you can talk to my wife and people that know me, um, I've heard a thousand times, ten thousand times, well, you're supposed to be a Christian, you're supposed to do this, and you're supposed to do that, and you're... We're not supposed to be a doormat, let me tell you something. We're not to be a doormat. Uh, we're to love, we're to be there for, for others, but we're not to be a doormat. Uh, so being humble is not being a doormat. Um, humbleness, people that are humble tend to put others' needs ahead of their self. Um, excuse me, they make great leaders also. Some of the uh, greatest leaders we've ever had uh, are humble, and, and they'll listen to, the, the, to, to those under them and um, get feedback of all under them and then, and then make uh, the best uh, decision based on that. They're not puffed up or arrogant and thinking that they know it all and people underneath of them uh, just work for them and, and are cattle or, or just a number or whatever. Uh, great leaders uh, listen. Um, matter of fact, being humbled Humble people are fantastic listeners. Um, I had to stumble with this, and I still do to this day. And um, I could talk to somebody, and while they're talking to me, I'm thinking of something else to say. Which, of course, is totally rude. Um, and it makes me and everybody else think that what I'm going to say is more important than what, you're, what you have to say. Being humble is the exact opposite. Being humble is somebody that, that, that listens, truly listens, and hears from their heart to your heart. And, uh, and when they do, you know, uh, talk, they add to or um, contribute to what you're talking about. And, and their heart comes out. Um, some of the greatest people I've ever met are so humbled and and they speak little. And I'm not saying to be humble, uh, you don't speak much. <laughs> That's my problem right there. I'm, 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 I'm a big speaker. Um, but people that speak a lot tend to be, I think, I believe, less humble. Um, and people that are good listeners, you know, even James says, be slow to speak. Quick to listen. Slow to speak. Quick to listen. Um, Humble people tend to be happier people. Um, they, they're they just so happy with, with things that they got. And especially the humble Christians, they are so thankful for what the Lord gives them. And, and um, they tend not to want more than what they've got. And they tend actually to want more for others. Um, I've heard a lot of humble people even brag upon other people. Instead of bragging upon themselves, they'll brag upon other people. Um, I'm sure some of you have been around some people that are very humble. Um, some of your older people tend to be more humble, it seems. You might say because they've been around a while and you know they've kind of got all the bugs uh, worked out. And, um, although I met some humble teenagers. Um, but overall, I think most of the humility that I see in the United States today is from Christians. 
ones that really strive to obey God's word and really strive to love God and to get to, to know and love uh, others. Um, and that's why we're here today, is to set aside our own desires. Um, and that's, of course, it's a desire to get closer to God, but set aside our own desires sometimes uh, for that of someone else's. And I'm not, again, saying be a doormat, and I'm not saying, you know, always, you know, stop everything you're doing and, uh, you know, go help others. I'm not saying that at all, because um, also to be humble, um, you need to... to uh, have a, a keen mind and, 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 a, and, a, and a humble mind also to, to differentiate um, who wants to use you and who wants to abuse you or, uh, or who truly needs help. Um, humble people don't dominate a conversation. We talked about that, but they don't dominate the conversation. They don't want to just get their point of view across. Um, and they're also not afraid to admit when they're wrong. Um, Matter of fact, some people that are humble, matter of fact, accept the criticism. And in the Army, we used to call it constructive criticism. Um, I know, when I'm being criticized, I don't feel very constructive, but uh, that's what we used to call it, constructive criticism. But uh, a lot of humble people, they welcome that so they can learn from it and grow from it. And I'll tell you what, that is a strong man or woman that is, says, okay, let me know. You know, you got something to criticize what I'm doing. But, and, and I welcome you, if you do this, do it with heart and do it away from other people. But, you know, you got something, you know, against or, or to criticize, uh, do it in a loving manner. But uh, humble people will take that in, learn from it, and grow from it. Um, um, Again, there's a such thing as constructive criticism, um, and there's a such thing as destructive criticism. Please understand the difference between you know, the both. Uh, you can have something against somebody and, and put it in a, in a kind way. I always told my children, you can, you can say anything you want to me, anything, but just be tactful and watch how you say it. For instance, say I told my daughter to take the trash out. And she would come back saying, what are you asking me for? You don't, oh, you're always asking me. And, and uh, you know, any of my stick and turn, it's Shelby's turn and, and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Reverse. Push the reverse button. Let's try this again. Now, try this one more time. Now, if they would say, okay, Dad, I'm happy, happy to do it, but uh, it's not my turn. I did it yesterday, but if you want me to do it, fine. Then I would say, oh, no problem, no problem. Right, it's not your turn. Um, same thing with criticism. You can uh, say it in, in, in a way that gets your point across, but it doesn't tear someone apart, or make it feel down and out. Um, so remember, uh, you can be humble in your words you say too, not just you know uh, listening and who you are, but even how you say your words. Um, uh, humble people, they place God's will above their will. Um, and the need of others above their own. Um, humbleness is something that we we all will probably work on until the, the day that the, the good Lord takes us. It's not something that's going to happen overnight. But when you show God that you truly want to be humble and you truly want to love Him and learn to love others above yourself, the door is open. That's what He wants. That's exactly what He wants. You just made that first step. Now the Holy Spirit is going to work with you. And if you're sincere and you work at it and you keep into this word, okay, um, it, it will happen. You know, and for some it might be quicker than others. Um, it all depends on how hard in your heart is. Um, I'm, I'm an impatient man and I know uh, sometimes it's hard for me to be humble and say stop and go traffic, especially if I'm in a hurry. Um, where in other areas I mean, might be more humble than you are. So it, it'll take time, but... God sees, again, we talked about this before, remember, He sees the heart, and He sees if you truly want to. So, that being said, um, work on it. Um, you want to know how to do it? First and foremost, I think most of you are going to know what I, what I want to say. Find you a quiet place, and really get into uh, a communication with, with the Lord. And remember, communication, I want to go over just real quick about this. Communication is two-way. 
what if I would just take you out to dinner and I would just, you know, we'd sit down and I started talking and I started talking and I started talking, asking you things, didn't let you answer, asking you things and telling you how, how my things were and what I like and what I don't like and, and uh, all of a sudden I got up and left. Now, what would you think? <laughs> be pretty rude, wouldn't it? That would be really rude. Now that's what we do to God. Stop and think. We sit down, we pray, we give a request, even praises, and then we stop and leave. I suggest that if you pray for five minutes, you give God five minutes to talk to you. At first, some of you might not hear nothing, okay? Some of you may. But isn't it kind to do that? Give Him five minutes. I guarantee you do that, and sooner or later, uh, for some maybe sooner, for some maybe later, you're going to start listening and hearing from God. And He's going to start uh, answering your prayers and, and talking to you, and pretty soon you're going to hear Him audibly. I mean, you might think I'm crazy. I am serious. Uh, so give Him time. Uh, be kind. Maybe, maybe give Him more time than, than, than uh, you, know, you talked, but give Him time. Um, that being said, uh, you want to be humble? Come to him and, and open up your heart and say, I really, really, really want to know how to be humble, how to really put you first and other people second, and how to be a better person. Um, second, you know what I'm going to say again, right here. Uh, look up. If you're unsure, Google it. Google Bible verses on humility. Um, and then read them. Cross-reference them. Don't just read them, but read them and find other ones that back up what that says. You know, and you're going to find it all over the Bible, the New Testament and the Old Testament. Um, third, practice it. Really practice it. Start with your family. That's the hardest people to do. Start with your family. And just, you know, don't be afraid. I don't, you know, I don't care if your children are three, four, five, six years old. Be humble with your children. Be humble with your wife or your husband. Um, a neighbor that maybe you're going to have a hard time with. But really try, and, I, and it's just like anything else. Once you start, it's going to get easier and easier, and then it's going to become who you are. It will. I'm going to let you go. Um, God bless each and every one of you. It's, it's awesome to, to have this time with you. Um, I'll see you again uh, here within a week, and uh, we'll get together and smile and get in His Word and praise Him all day long. What do you think? All right. Let's bow our heads. Most gracious Father, thank you so much for allowing this to happen. Um, it swells my heart, Lord. It swells my heart to have those come and want to know more about you. And it swells my heart, Lord, for me to, to learn as much as I can, too. Because to get into this lesson, I get to learn more. So thank you for each and every one of them out there. And please bless them and forgive them. Lord, pull them so much closer to you. Lord, let them know that you love them. Let them know, Lord, how much you care. Lord, there's some out there I can feel now that are going through so much pain. There's some out there, Lord, that are hurting. There's some out there, Lord, one has depression. The other one, Lord, please help her, Lord. She's with anxiety. Please help her. Um, help those out there, Lord. There's a couple, three out there that financially, Lord, please help them. Let them know you care, Lord. In order for them to watch us, Lord, they're opening up the door and they're saying they want to know you better and they want to get closer to you. Help them to do that, Lord. Thank you for the old, and Lord, to bring them back safely. Keep them all safe this week. In Jesus Christ, your son's mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. All right, God bless. We'll see you later. And Lord be with you. And remember, he died because he loves you. Jesus did. Thank you. God bless.